We're all filthy good for nothing consumers, right? Here are nine everyday carry accessories that will make your life as a photographer or videographer just a little bit easier. Number one, a backpack clip. In 2022, I lugged a great big heavy DSLR up to the top of Snowden with my bare hands. Please hold your applause. In 2023, I put my camera on a strap across my body and it spent the entire time banging around my hip like a house door in a gale. It was an absolute pain in the ass, to be frank. Enter this. Now, I was skeptical about getting one of these because a couple of years ago, everyone and his dog was recommending that you get a backpack clip. You know, one of those advertising campaigns that isn't an advertising campaign, but all the top YouTubers conveniently have got exactly the same bit of gear and they just love it. The general idea with this is you screw this onto your backpack, screw this onto your camera, and then you have both hands free in case you need to scale a peak or wrestle a rutting pig or something. The Falcom F38, which is what I have, is very versatile because it comes with an Arca Swiss plate, which means I can use this on the backpack, on a tripod, a gimbal, a dog. You get the idea. Number two, USB-C everything. Do I really need to say any more? One cable for every single thing. Power, data, charging. That's the same as power, isn't it? Tying the hands of a hostage. You're covered. Oh, but I'm the center of the universe and I don't have USB-C for this and that and that and that and that and that. Shh. These are USB-C adapters for every application conceivable. USB-A. 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 Where's the other one? Lightning, there we go. Once you join the wonderful world of USB-C, never again will you have to wonder if, oh, did I remember that cable? And, oh, did I remember this cable? It also means you can be welcome to the wonderful world of things like this folding plug that has two holes in the bottom. Number three, a small camera light. I'm no lighting impresario, but even I understand that sometimes you need a little something to fill in the shadows. This is an Aperture ALM9. I knew what that was. This comes with a cold shoe mounted enough power to blind a small animal. And you can even rip the front off and put in gels, diffusion material, piece of paper with some rude drawings on it. I don't know. Even outside of the things you could do, I would buy this just for the way that this attaches to the front. Sheer magnetism, man. Number four, a power bank. I struggle to think of a single job I've done over the last few months where at least one person hasn't run up to me in the middle of shooting going, Please, sir. I want a charger. The internet is full of recommendations for multi-thousand pound eco flows, etc., which could possibly run a small village in Swaziland for a few months, but they are expensive as f very heavy, and to be perfectly honest, completely unnecessary for us mere mortals. This cost me 16 pounds. It has four different power outlets, it's rugged as f and it even comes with a little display. Number five, sensor swabs. We've all had the experience where you get back off your trip, you transfer your footage, you're getting high off the smell of your own farts because of how happy you are with what you shot, you get into the editing suite and... The f is that? Now I know you can retouch all that stuff out in editing software, but to be perfectly honest, it's very tedious to do, and I've got better things I'd like to be doing. I always have at least one of these in every single bag that I possess. It takes two seconds at the beginning of a day's shooting to just have a look and see if there's anything on the sensor and then just wipe it off. Some people prefer those little I find that they struggle to move stubborn bits of dirt, whereas this, you can really get it right in there. Two seconds of prep can save you hours in the editing suite. Number six, a poncho. No, we are not talking about people in those old Western films. We're talking about waterproof ponchos. See, the problem with a coat is it's a coat. It does one thing and one thing only. They're often very, very expensive, kind of bulky. And if you overindulge a bit at Christmas and New Year and get a bit chubby, it doesn't fit you anymore. From the anorexic all the way to the morbidly obese, a poncho fits anybody with any size. They are super cheap and super versatile. You can use them as a raincoat, a waterproof bag cover, a ground sheet, a picnic blanket. If you find yourself stuck in the wilderness, you can use it as a survival shelter. You can collect drinking water with it. I could go on. Most importantly, you too can become a fashion icon for less than it costs to buy a bottle of water in a train station. 15 pounds to be exact. Like the video if you think keeping your body running costs way too much. Number seven, a folding filter bottle. Has this ever happened to you? You're out hiking, you've run out of water. Happens to the best of us. You see a lovely clear mountain stream and you think how wonderful it would be to just 
plunge your head in and partake. Most of us know that it's not a very good idea because a river is probably about as clean as a hobo's flip-flop. They're a bit wet. I love him up. But if your knowledge of basic hygiene still doesn't suppress the urge, then you can invest in one of these, a folding filter bottle. You stick this in the stream and then the... I've just sprayed water everywhere. Oh, that's what it looks like. Sorry, I've never really, I don't pay attention to things. You stick this in the stream, suck it through, and then the activated charcoal filter, ooh, will make sure you don't get sick. I mean, you'll still get a stomach ache, but it will be the freezing cold river water and not little nasties doing the cannibal run with your intestines. Number eight, a car camera mount. Now, quick disclaimer, this entirely depends on the kind of footage you're looking to capture. It's a bit more applicable to photos rather than video. But that being said, if you create any sort of travel or adventure content, then being able to use your car as a video platform can really extend your capabilities, as well as allowing you to indulge in your narcissism. I'm going to take you on a journey, but I'd also like to make this about me. This is the one that I normally use. There are a lot of these around. I've got a smaller one somewhere that's only really any good for having a GoPro on the front, but a slightly more heavy duty mount doesn't actually break the bank. This will happily take a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a great big lens on the front, sticks to the window, sticks to the body of your car. What more could you want? Number nine, a shotgun mic. The internet is very good at making you feel like your content isn't worth shit because you don't have remote focus pulling or a gimbal for every shot or the latest cinematic magic ultra lens 3.5 with the active whatever. Now while it is very true that bad audio can ruin good visuals, I mean after all who wants to listen to some mush mouth moron mongoloiding into an on-camera mic? Good audio doesn't actually have to break the bank. When I bought the Rode Video Micro, it was about 50 pounds. I think there's a new version, so it might be even cheaper. If you're recording ambient sound, interviews, presented to camera, then this thing has outstanding sound quality, doesn't require any external power, and it's small enough to fit inside a badger's earlobe. Well, those are nine accessories that make my job as a photographer easier. Hopefully you found this useful, and if you made it through to the end, you're a champ and I love you very much. Till next time, bye. Watch this.